Hi, welcome to Mystifying Disabilities. I, I have a very special guest with me today, Tony Ellis. Tony Ellis is a renowned to to toy maker. And uh, right now, he has gone into assistive technology. So I'm trying to tell us all about his various innovations in the space. Tony, welcome to the show. And thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. Hello, hello, good morning. Good. Um, as I say, it's lovely to meet you. Um, I'm a, I'm a, an inventor, which is a, a strange thing, I guess, in these days. But fortunately, I've, I've, I've made a success out of it. I, I actually licensed 65 products in the last 20 years, um, and some of them sold in multi millions. They were mostly toys because that's why I'm called Toy Maker. Um, and I, all for all that time, I wanted to do something, you know to give something back because I've had a successful life. Um, and an inventor is not easy to be an inventor. You have to literally sail with the, oh, you know, the, the ups and downs, you know, the, it's feast and famine. Yeah. All, you know, you're, most of the time it's famine because you're trying to get your toy concepts taken and so on. And then all of a sudden you might get a hit like my biggest hit which was Cube World, which uh, sold to Mattel and millions of sold all around the world. Um, and then you get the feast, but uh, but most of the time it's the pain. But anyway, what I always wanted to do was I'm technology based. I, I live technology and I wanted to use the tech that I developed for many things, my robotics, um, to start working with assistive technology. And uh, that's all started about a couple of years ago. And I've now got to come up with, I've got nine different assistive technology uh, pro, um, devices. Mm -hmm. um, and they're quite radical. I mean, my, my first one was a, a device called um, MBT. This is an MBT, but basically this process is breath um, and it turns it into speech and speech controls Alexa. In fact, she's there, so she wake up in a minute. Mm -hmm. so, so in other words, with this, you can control Alexa with your breath. Now it's not, it's, it's more clever than that. It, it's actually a, an element of your breath. It doesn't work by, it, it will not be affected by breathing or sound, but only the small, it detects the small uh, an element in the puff of, I, I could give you a demo for instance. So we've got an Alexa in the room. Would you like to see? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But before we get into that, how about yeah. those, those who have who have problems breathing, those, those who are asthmatic or those who cannot breathe consistently, would the device be able to pick it up? Absolutely. Um, it takes unbelievably small amount of the the air to actually make it start processing. What it does, it takes the, the what your the puff of air that you get, and we sequence that. And then that processes it into a, a sentence that goes out to Alexa verbally. So, so Alexa feels I'm like. The uh, family. Hold on, I'm going to have to turn her off. She's <laughs> she's waking up here. Hold on, I'll turn her off. And I, right here we go. Yeah, otherwise she. <laughs> so I'll turn it back on when we demo. Um, yeah. So, um, and, and so, but it takes amazingly small amount of air. So much so that MBT will work twelve inches away from your mouth, in, literally 12 inches away. So it doesn't have, it does, the contact doesn't have to be close. I mean, the closer you, is the sort of more reliable, but it, it's that small element um, that, it, it, that it detects. And that's where the secret of product is actually. It's not, it's, not, it's not air as such, and it's not noise. So you can shout at it and breathe into it, nothing will happen. But as soon as you make these slight puffs, then it starts processing them. And then we process that into a sequence, and then you get a sentence that's then audibly sent to uh, to Alexa, and it's very low cost. Um, it's uh, I mean that that your unit could retail at less than a hundred pounds. Yeah, it, and that, yeah, and so so this device would cost less than a hundred pounds, um, and it, people that um, I. I I've been able to check it with, with one person with cerebral palsy. Now, the thing is, because I've got no backing, I can't get a, um, tech ch checks done. You know, I can't get um, oh, um, a user, a user for, 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 for Yeah, I can't get any back because obviously you've got to get the NHS involved. Trials, that's the word. I can't get trials done, but so I've had to try and find that people. Now, and I, I tried it on a young lad and it worked straight away. He, um, 
he's, he had he has a very severe um, cerebral palsy where he's actually sort of really tied into the chair and so on like that, and he has to his parents have to do everything for him. Um, and within 10 minutes, he was using this and he was controlling Alexa and he was controlling his light in his room, um, getting music, um, reading his audio books, all by his breath. Now, the thing is, is he, 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 I can understand him and you'd understand him, but the cerebral palsy has gone to his, um, his, his stokal. Yeah. And Alexa, Alexa won't, won't, won't let him pass the keyword. Because his parents bought him an Alexa right at the start, but it didn't work because he couldn't get past the keyword. Because what happens is, is with um, with the Alexa system, the keyword is quite critical, um, so the recognition level is high. Otherwise, it would be going off all the time in a false false triggering. In fact, the, the early days it did that. I remember when we got the first Alexa, it was forever going off, you know, because it thought it heard Alexa in like a television advert. Things like you wouldn't even sound like Alexa. So what they did, they really tightened up the recognition of the keyword. And of course, that then makes people like uh, this, this young lad, Jordan, that makes it difficult for him because his voice is, is you know, with his, 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 um, has problems because of the vocal cords and he won't get past. But now he can get past it because this lets him control his lights, uh, radio, he can have any radio station he wants, uh, television, um, uh, news, he gets the late news and so on, his audible books and his playlists. So this 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 one thing does all that. And it's sat down alone um, and so on. So and it was amazing because I mean I, I just you know you could see that his parents were like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. For once he's doing something on he completely doing something on his own. Um, and it was and that triggered me into going, oh, I've got to do more. I've got I've got to keep doing more. But as I say, I've never been able to get anything, any interested in my work. So, um, and, and it's all because of profit. People are looking for profit. They're not looking for someone to come in here and just do it uh, because they want to do it and want to help people and so on. And it's a very sad world. Um, I, I'm not looking for profit in my, my work. I'm looking to help as many people as I can. Um, and in Africa, you know, I, I mean, they, I could we, they, we could do so much because it's low cost. You know, this gives people like Jordan the ability to control his life for the first time ever. Um, and it, it was exciting to see. But because I can't get any trials, because I can't get any backing, I haven't been able to go much further. But I've kept making the devices. So, oh, I, I chat a lot. So <laughs> you <gotta> stop me. <laughs> No problem. I think I, I, I think you are very passionate about what you do, and and, and it shows. Sure. Yeah, and for me, I I like people who who are in it because they want to make an impact, and they are not thinking of the profit. Because I always said, so, so that if you follow your passion, don't worry, yes. money, money will eventually come. But it may take a long time, but then one day somebody will see the value in what you are doing. Funded for you. Yeah. So it, apart from, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, but it's wonderful though to see what you've done help someone. Do you yeah. see what I mean? There, there's value in that. It, it was wonderful to see this this young lad. For now, he could he could and the the, the Alexa device lets you. It's a, it's an intercom as well, and and it can phone a mobile phone number for you now. So it could do so much. Um, and, and that device does all that. So he can actually call his mum through the intercom, which is, you know, Alexa can call another another Alexa anywhere, yeah. that, you know, once they're locked in. Um, and it just, it, it, this simple device changed changed his life. Um, and that, that that's just really fantastic. And, and that drove me to keep going. So I, I then started doing um, um, communicators, you know, like communicators, uh, that people have on uh, and it for T, TTS text to speech and so on and so this helps people um, and communicators are the classic of the, the bad point place that we are in with AT. A communicator at the moment the, it's all held by the big companies and a communicator can cost between two and a half thousand to seven thousand pounds. It's scurrilous because they don't need to cost that much money. They are just literally 
um, a ruggedized uh, tablet with some special software. Yet they charge those ridiculous amounts of money. And I realized very early that I could use my skills to make communicators and to make communicators that, that are different. And, and something that you said yesterday was very interesting about making AT products, like you were saying about your crutches, but making AT products that are good, you know, not big, domestic, horrible looking medical things. But, and so this is a micro communicate, uh, communicator. I'll switch it on. I don't know if you can see the screen. There we go. Yeah. It's in demo mode. Yeah. And you can see so it's a touch screen. This one works by the, the, your, your MBT. So this works for your breath. Mm -hmm. And you can see the screen comes up and tells you what your yeah. what the breath does. So you're in de a demo mode. But you see, this is a communicator that looks, it doesn't, it's nice. It's yeah. almost a, sort of, <laughs> yeah. And so, and then that, that went into the, the bigger communicator. Um, again, you see my communicators, this is the, 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 the next size up. And this, this one does everything. I mean, this is a real communicator. It does um, type in, you can type, and you can type in this from your breath. This, you, this lets you type in via your breath or my face cheek glasses, which we can talk about later, but this lets you type or control a wheelchair via your face cheeks. Um, and um, yeah, yes, it's uh, uh, and so if I, I'll just power this up and you'll see it's this is a, a lovely device, but you know, on a wheelchair, this looks pretty cool. I, I've done graphics of it, so it's called uh, there we go. So you can see it's again on demo, so you can see it sort of yeah. working, but that's how you, you work out letters. It, it works on an XY matrix, so you, you can very quickly, I can do 12 minute uh, 12 words per minute on. On this, and that's the select screen where you can select like television or internet or whatever. So, um, and so on. So this this is, can be controlled in many ways um, by eye, eye cheek or breath or touch. We do a I do a touch a, a touch version where you only need capacitive touch, um, and so on. And so, yeah. So and, and then now the interesting thing about this is this device could retail at less than five hundred pounds, and you think. Okay, so how come people have to pay three thousand pounds? You know, I mean, I've developed everything in it. I've developed the operating system and that because I'm crazy. I just make stuff and I'm, I'm technical. But um, you know, it doesn't need to be three thousand pounds. If it's five hundred pounds, six people can have that device for the price of one. Sorry, I, I am passionate. Sorry, <laughs> I'm going to let you get some questions in. <laughs> no, no, what you're saying is true because I mean, these are, these are things that people need. It's, it's not a luxury, it's, it's an essential device that somebody needs to be able to live a good quality life. So I don't see why why, why the big company should, should be there to profit uh, exorbitantly from it. Because it, it's almost criminal. Because you are preventing people from having a good quality of life by by by, by overpricing some of these devices, it's like it's, it's like pricing, let's say, for women, let's say, pricing sanitary towers very 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 high because you want to make a profit. Meanwhile, you know that every month a woman will, will need to use a sanitary tower. And 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 it, it's criminal to do things like that because because I mean people with disabilities are are very dependent on other people, and anything that uh, that can be done to make us independent should be done at a low cost because at the end of the day, our caregivers or our parents or our loved ones will not be around forever. So we should, so we should be able to look after ourselves. Yes. Uh, and, and the interesting point and why the technology, AT technology is so expensive is because insurance companies pay for it. And that's the, the thing is, is like, um, and that's why only the wealthy and the rich countries have this stuff because it's all backed by insurance uh, policies, uh, you know, where basically they don't, they don't care what the cost is. So they enable this huge markups to be put on by the manufacturers of these these devices, um, and that that and the thing like with Africa, that that isn't out there. So, you know, then these 
large companies, these the corporations are not interested in, 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 you know, in helping because they know that the profits aren't there. Yeah. And they're, they're happily getting huge profits in the UK, in, in America and so on. But even in America, you know, it, that's very much based on insurance. So, you know, if your insurance pays for the AT device and so on like that, and that's again why, again why they they can afford, they, they can spend that, but they can charge that sort of money. But in America, there's many many people that can't afford insurance. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not you know it's it, it's a, it's a terrible situation, and I'm in this really to to shock, and that's maybe why I've had no success because I. I would I, I do believe that the assistive technology companies are a bit frightened of me because a lot of people are seeing what I'm doing and I'm making no I'm showing that this stuff is doesn't have to be expensive and you can be innovative because there's so little innovation as well for reader in in the assistive technology it, you know you're still using stuff that was there 10 15 years ago and so on yes so, yeah. so, and then so, so that, I mean again like the innovation of yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So go ahead. Sh sh no, no, you carry on. <laughs> so I, 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 was, I, I was having a conversation with somebody, with another AT, AT developer a couple of weeks ago, and, 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 I, and I asked him, for me, I think that, that the reason why, why people haven't been that interested in AT it's because the, uh, the the disability community haven't had that much spending power to be able to pay for for those devices for people to be able to make profit. But gradually, but gradually over the past 20, 30 years, we are seeing the, the, the people with disabilities entering the workforce, and 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 obviously. Uh, get, getting uh, getting financial financial power to be able to pay for their devices. So right now there are more people interested in AT than, than there were 10, 15 years ago. What what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and and it, it, it's with like the the GDIH and the, the, the fantastic organisation and what we. You know, there's good. There are good things occurring because of what, what you know the the launch that we saw yesterday, which is very very exciting. Um, and, and you know, I I, I was I, it was so many good interviews there, and I, I I've made some notes here because I, I thought Sh Chapel was very um you uh, the the what they called him the grandfather of AT he uh, and so on. Um, and, and and he he said a lot of very wise words and 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 about about the way things are, are changing um but at the at the end of the day we've got to we've got to think with low cost that doesn't mean a company can't make a profit don't get me wrong i'm not someone in here that says you should just go in there and not make a profit you've got to make a profit if you've got a company and shareholders but what i don't like is people making huge profits, ridiculous profits. I mean, if we go back to a communicator, a communicator like the what we're talking about, these, these big big companies, it's just a tablet that's ruggedized, which means, you know, it can drop and so on like that, with a bit of custom software on it. Now, if that's 3,000 pounds and you've got less than 300 pounds worth of hardware there, you can see there's a, just a the whole thing is just crazy. It's it, 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 you're you're paying ten times what the prime cost of of the base thing. So it's you know it's a, a multiplying factor of ten to get it to its its three thousand um, pound. And but the thing is, is if if we relook at it and then we make something like you know this for five hundred pounds, do you see my point? It it all um, it, it can go so much further. And we can get to the poorer countries and help many, many more people. And that's that's why I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. You know, because I know you you're a part of the GDI, the, the hub, aren't you, Karida? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm consulting for them. Fantastic, absolutely. Fantastic. I mean, I I'm just so I'm just so excited about the 
potential. And you know, you said so, you, see, you said a lot of white stuff yesterday, and then you were saying about the, uh, uh, which I, I sent you some details of, of this this charge this charger. Because um, you're absolutely right. In Africa, you know, one of the problems is is if we get electronic devices in there, power distribution is is very poor. In, in many places. So it's all well and good having these fantastic um, AT devices, even my AT devices, but they need to be charged and powered up and so on. Um, and I've been given that thought. And it's funny, you brought it up, the only person yesterday, but you actually brought it up about powering devices. And then, so this is my, this is a, a bio power generator based on supercapacitors. Now, supercapacitors are really cool. You can charge them up very, very quickly and they can actually store, a, they can give out a huge current when, when, they, when you need them. These, these things can start a car, literally. Um, really? You can, yeah, if you go on YouTube and look up super gaps, people are starting lorries with them. I mean, because they can give out a huge charge. Now, uh, like 10 minutes of, of turn on this, this hand crank, which is very simple, um, charges up the, the pack of super caps and you could like, Get a, you could keep a light going for a light hours, a few hours, but you could charge phones and anything. And it's not, it's not difficult, it's just a, just a cranking system. So it's, so it's bio. But the thing is, it works all, all weathers. It doesn't matter if it's raining, it's storming out there. It's not like solar, where you, know, you have to have the sun, which I know there is a lot of, but you know, maybe you need the power of the night or something, and you, you can get it from this, and it could charge mobile phones and so on. Um, my next version will have a, a five volt a five volt um, charger port on it, but I just wanted to do it to, to you know because I, I I wanted to test the the, the possibility of using this in, in places like Africa, um, where it, this could you know literally power up all these devices that we're talking about um, and so on. And I am working on solar as well, which is interesting. I'm working on solar tracking, which improves the you could get forty percent more energy if you track the sun rather than just have a solar cell. Because I mean, you mentioned solar yesterday as well, but it's these innovations, you see, you've got to think laterally out of the box because, you know, getting assistive technology to countries like Africa, there's, there's got to be power there and so on, infrastructure and so on. Let, 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 let's look at, at some of your robots. The, I, I like the one that-, that Oh, you... robot. So let me yeah, yeah. Let, let me share, share, share my screen. I will I will um, pull it up okay. and, and share the screen. Right. So do you want to see? All right. Okay. All right. This, all right. Right. Oh, this is let's see. This is little Dewey. Now um, Dewey's um. Oh, how do I get there? He's now he's 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 a prop robot because I'm a, I'm a science fiction fan, and okay. he comes from a film called Silent Running. It was an amazing film, absolutely amazing film. Um, actually, probably that light might be, if I put that down there, you might see. Yeah, so I, I am a fan of, so I, I, I had this built and, and so on. Um, and there he is. Um, and this is my crazy design office, my design lab. If I go around here, you can see all oh, some of the toys that I've developed and licensed. Um, so I, there's my assistive technology on that shelf there, okay. but there you can see, you can see all the toys. Um, I've, got, I've made a lot of toys. <laughs> I can um, see that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Cube, Cube World is here. This is Cube World, which as I sold, sold in multi-millions around the world uh, and so on. And um, yeah, and then we've got, oh, we've got the real robot down here. Now I'm, oh, I'm going to have to... Oh, and we're probably going to do so. There's out here. Yeah. Now that's a real robot, and it's um. Oh, I'm trying to do this. Sorry about this, but I'm trying to do it well. I'm, now he's a, a an absolute real robot. Is motion detection. Uh, he's on charge at the moment. Um, he's got he can he can detect six levels of emotion. And the idea of 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 out here is is a, a a care robot. It's an assistive care robot. What I'm trying to do is build robotics to to help people in care homes and so on and become companion. Okay. <clears throat> so out here is completely Alexa. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? There we go. There he is. Look. <laughs> there. But as I say, this is a real robot. Um, 
there. He can pour drinks and uh, uh, yeah. semi-autonomous. Yeah, let me let, let me let 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 me play play the YouTube video that he sent me. Oh yes, yes. Oh, if you yeah, please do if you can do that. That's a fantastic idea. Uh, yeah. So yes. Let me Okay, so would you like to talk a little bit about them? Yes, yeah. I mean, what what isn't on there is the audio. Um, the audio is not coming through because it it, it um, the actual wheelchair, um, to, you know, gives what it's doing sort of thing. But uh, yeah, that that's um, so so that what it is. Um, uh, these clock. Yeah, are you gonna? Should we do this one or or do you, you want to do you want to do another one? Oh, okay. okay, you, you go ahead. Then yeah. I'll, I'll okay. show another one. Yeah. There's some. Um, there's audio on that because what I did, I, I I put speech onto the wheelchair and so on. And the wheelchair is really important to me. I, I'm very excited about it because um, uh, these glasses, they reliably can detect the the facial movement under the um, the eyes and very. Uh, the, the slight movement and basically, if you can blink, you can use these muscles. So this can be people that are really paralyzed, very badly paralyzed, but they can they can control a wheelchair with it. Now, also in that video, you see that I made the wheelchair scale model smart. And the idea there is, is there's a, a microcontroller in there, or you know, a microprocessor controller that is literally checking safety for everything. So um, the sensors won't allow the each wheelchair to go over, say, a stair or or or, or, or an edge. So that and it, the sensors won't let the chair go into a wall or or from the left hand side it has to it has to it won't let it go through a door that it can't fit through if, if you see so and all that so what some radical new things on this wheelchair is now is that a it's controlled by your eyes b the, the, the wheelchair is very smart and it won't you know it, it won't let the person get down hurt because if you see in the video it takes over and it, it stops, you know, when you see the, the wheelchair go towards the edge of that table, it, it won't go over it sort of thing and, and so on. Um, and this was incredibly low cost. I mean, I, I these glasses and their radio, I, I'm an RF designer, so I, I, I used to design radio uh, fre frequency devices. I, um, like I used to design car keys, you know, for the, your car, your radio car keys and so on. Um, so it, this is 433 megahertz, which is license exempt. You don't need a license, but that cost me less than 20 pounds to build those glasses with the RF in and everything. I mean, it's lit, it's, again, this is this cost thing again. You know, if, that, if some big manufacturer gets this, this is a big 500 pound, you know, you know how this sort of stuff goes. Um, and the wheelchair as well, um, you know, it, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll just get that for you. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's not complicated. It's again, it's, it's, it's just clever algorithms and software in the main controller here. And they, you know, they just take over if 
if the wheelchair gets into trouble, basically. Um, and and there, there's a receiver there and it processes um, what the eye movement does. And then you've got these just these simple sensors here that just allow, you've got left and right, look down and forward as you, you see them in the videos. But you know, this is, this wouldn't be expensive to put on a wheelchair, you know, probably. I mean, it'd have to be adapted for electric wheel, but it wouldn't be expensive. And yeah. I've never seen any, I've never seen any innovation like that ever done. And it's so easy. Just to my point, and it comes back to what we were saying about innovation, Farida. Um, you know, we've still got wheelchairs that are just like, you know, these gray things and stuff that you just, yeah. and it, it wouldn't cost a fortune to, to actually, to build this stuff in and so on and the other good thing the other thing here is is that because you've got two eye cheeks and so you've got x y so it can do if you saw from my um uh, my my uh communicators there's a there's an x y matrix which is lets you get to a letter quite quickly because you're using x y on, on your eyes um i can type with this so i could be totally paralyzed and i could type um, because as I say, if you're if you can use your your eye muscles, yeah. if you blink, you, and that, 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 that would then people that, so you could have people that pro almost had lock, locked in syndrome, okay, and providing they can move those eyes, they could actually communicate. They could write emails. Uh, you could play games. I mean, you, this would act, and you could actually play simple games with it, um, and so on. You control a wheelchair. Um, and it's just, you know, this thing, this stuff excites me. <laughs> it really excites me. And I, no, I think I, it could... I, I'm really happy that you're breaking it down because people see some of these innovations and, and they think that it's such a big thing, it's such a very complicated thing that has to cost millions of pounds or millions of dollars and all that stuff. And you are just breaking it down into a very simple, simple device. Yeah. Which, which essentially is basically what, what it is. It's a simple device which consists of, of transistors and chips and all those things that, that, that are assembled together, programmed into, and, and, and bam, you, ha you have your, your, your device, which, which, which can help a lot of people live, live live meaningful lives without without being so dependent on other people yeah and that that's just wonderful isn't it i mean that is just like um and again you know it, it, it's so i just i just find it so rewarding and I'm, I'm i'm really hoping at the moment that some sooner or later i'm not sooner or later i'm gonna get a break and i'm gonna you know and it may be with this it may be with this launch yesterday i don't know i mean obviously you can't tell but sooner or later I'm, i hope to get a break and i'm gonna get a chance to get my ideas yeah because you know i'm just a i'm just a one-man band basically i'm this this you know I'm, the, I'm a guy in his office here you've seen my crazy office with all my toys and stuff but you know i'm not i'm not big i'm small guy i'm small guy with but i've got big ideas and i've been able to turn them into real products and, and so yeah. on and uh let, 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 let's look at the video of, of outer pouring the drink yes thank you it will need the sound if you can okay yeah It's, it's recognizing the drink there.
let me pause it, pause it, pause it here. I have a question. How, how did you know when to stop pouring, pouring the, the drink? Does it have, have, have something to detect when the glass is full? Yeah, no, it, it, it detects, it, it, it knows that by, um, what well, it does, it detects the weight of okay. the, the, the drink, the, the drink device. The, there's lots of sensors in the, the in the claws. Um, there's like, you can, you can actually see there's a proximity sensor in there and there's, there's a, a number of sensors and that's how it knows when it's finished. And also um, with the angle of the, um, the pour, um, it, 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 it would have to empty literally because of the angle anyway, but it does detect the weight and the weight changes um, and so on. Um, yeah, that's it, it, yeah. This is one of my favourite videos. Uh, out here is is a lot of fun, but it, it's a very serious machine. It's um, uh, it's waiting for last drops there. That's a, and so on. Um, yeah, I uh, it's I, I I've been build I've been building robots for forty five years for Ida, um, and this is the most advanced that I've ever I've built I, I, I built my first programmable robot in nineteen seventy nine. That shows you how old I am. But Altair Altair can le detect six levels of emotion. It's got advanced face recognition, and what you also saw on that. Um, clip there he was he recognized he's got object recognition so Altair recognized the drink and it was match rt and he looked up in his database and he knew that 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 object was match rt um and so on um oh this is face recognition yeah and oh oh this is a good this is good yep so here he is um and this this shows this um, emotional response because he's got an emotional response engine and the thing is is with the robot i i, I want it to become a companion to people uh, and so this is this is now using it, its um face recognition it can determine gender age um emotion um uh, and a, a, a number of things and that's the top camera the one in his head in the in the square box is the the vision processor so he then takes a look at the um, the baby, but the child is crying, um, and so he sort of I mean just I mean these are these are programs. I mean then you know the, obviously the robot's not real and it's not really upset, but it's to do with human interact machine interaction. You know it makes it it makes the robot feel like um, it's much friendlier and so on, um, and so he gets upset uh, there. But he has trouble because of the, the child. I mean, even I couldn't tell whether the child was a girl or a boy. So his gender detection is very difficult on that one. Um, so he's not sure because, you know, they, they, it comes up very close to either one. So now we've got Mr. Angry, which uh, I had to find this guy, this face off the, um, the Internet, because I had to find a, someone that looked very angry. <laughs> right. So um, now when Altair looks at that, he recognizes anger as because that's one of the emotions. Um, and he gets a bit upset about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> why is he so angry? <laughs> um, and yeah, and vision is the thing. The vision is the thing that's going to change everything for us all. Because once we've got vision with robots, they can do things by themselves without being in confined environments like you know like car when car assembly lines and they're welding or, or if they're painting the thing is is if the car's not there they still try to weld it <laughs> do you see my point yeah a, a, a robot like Altair can recognize and, and and see things and so on so a robot like that could could you know ultimately go to a fridge and, and get a, a, a product out that you, you had pre-taught it you, it has to be pre-taught what a coating looks like but he can he can distinguish between diet coke and, and um we, we already do that because have part they, of his vision yeah uh, have you taken it because there is a much much fun and uh, uh, really toxicity because i mean what, what the, 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 this issue that came up at google earlier last year where they said the, the, the facial recognition was, was not recognizing people who are not white so I don't know whether you are taking it into 
skin tone. Those, those who are black, yeah. those who are brown, and all those things as well. That is that is that is a slight. Um, issue, but it, the the new algorithms are, get, are, are getting better now. Because what what how how face vision works is first of all the ro the vision system takes a picture of your face, and then it landmarks things like um and like we've all it's like a fingerprint. A face is like a fingerprint. We've all got different landmarks, and then it it, it correlates those landmarks into into a pattern. And that's that you know I mean where my eyes are and where my nose is. And, and then and so on um, and of course in darker skins that's much harder to to see the the distinction so you're, you're absolutely right but um, it is what it, it, it's the systems do work but they are there's they're, there's they're, i've got to admit there's more error at the moment in the darker skin but the new algorithms are coming out all the time that, that are uh, are solving this and so on um, but my algorithms that I use, I mean, I, my, the, my vision system is based on a, a fantastic uh, device made by Omron, which is a huge corporation company. And it's, the, it's, the, it's, their, it's their vision system. I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is really the top, top of the range. I mean, this, can, this vision system can see faces in very low light levels, which used to be another big problem for us. As soon as the light level went down and, you know, you know face recognition used to be a real real pain because it would stop recognizing successfully when it was like half light and things but now um again improved uh performance um you know very very low light levels out here can 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 recognize the people and and that's how you can get this this wonderful companionship from a machine like this because with an emotion what we call an emotion engine in it it can it can show empathy it's not real empathy look you know this this thing isn't real it's not this is not terminator believe me this is this is this is a this is a machine running lots of algorithms and i you know i'm worried about terminator and one of the reasons is all my robots have got an on off switch on and they have this is true on, a, on, on off switch in the front yeah i'm not taking any chances i don't want <laughs> I don't you, want know, you know, you know to, 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 to make up uh, one day, uh, I see your machine standing up by you with a gun at your head. Eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you've got to think these, these things are not impossible. You know? um, but the thing is, you, you're never going to stop technology. But what you've got to do is, like Elon Musk says, I mean, the, the very fantastic guy that does Tesla and, you know, um, uh, and, and Amazon. Uh, no, that's Jeff Bezos, isn't it? But um, SpaceX, um, yeah. Elon Musk, a hero yeah. of mine. But he, he's, yeah, he's um, he's very, he's very worried about the AI and where it's going. And he's right. We should just be careful. We need to. You got. We can't stop AI, but we need to be careful with it and not let things like Skynet happen. You know, and, and from the you, you, you're no Skynet, which is I think the the. the the bad system and um, yeah it doesn't have to be like that um and uh you know but on off switch and i can i tell you a really funny story and now this is absolutely true right my first robot in um it, i, I the story's up on a, a, couple, a website called cybernetic zoo they've done the story on me but my first robot was very primitive it was 1979 it was programmed by tones uh, tone tone frequencies <coughs> A chip came out then that was brand new called the NE567, and it was a tone decoder. So I built a robot that had <clears throat> a 27 megahertz model um, RF link, and it sent tones to this receiver block, and the receiver block would do things like move the arms up, move left and right by different tone. Okay, And that meant that I could make it, but this is before micro control. So that meant I could make it programmable because those tones as well went onto a tape recorder. So do you see my point in the right sequence? So when you rewound the cassette after you got the robot to do a, a very simple job, you put the cassette, I had a car cassette back in, in its stomach, there's pictures of it on the net, um, and played it back. The robot did the same thing again because it played the tones back uh, in the right sequence. Now, I did a really silly thing. No on off switch, right? And I thought I was clever. I used to turn the robot on and off by the RF link. 
very stupid move, right? Because it was audio. Now, what happened was is that the robot had two very big power motors um, because it was a, it was heavy. It had a car battery in those days. It had a car battery, and it, it was it weighed just so much, and it was all aluminium chassis and stuff like that. Now, what happened is is I, I put a delta configuration of capacitors on the motors because of RF noise because motors make radio frequency noise. It worked. All oh, one day it didn't work. They failed, and it flooded the RF spectrum with pure random noise the robot went berserk because it was getting random frequencies through the audio all over the place from the noise from the, the motor it went nuts and um, we had a flat we did me and Judy just got married we'd had a flat at that time and the robots career around the living room it like crashed into this glass coffee table then went crashing into the wall and because of its weight it just slid the wall and all the wallpaper like like that then and then crashed into the door i couldn't turn it off because the rf link didn't work anymore because of the noise nothing worked from the rf link so there's me trying to get the back off this robot to put a fuse and this robot's five foot tall okay wow. and it's careering around the room like a lunatic and i managed to get the, the 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 fuse out but it had done quite a bit of damage and at that point my wife judy says look you, you can't make any more big robots <laughs> of the that time. But it, it's that reason. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I'm telling you, it's that reason. Yeah, that every yeah, robot yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like she, she, she didn't leave you. I would have left you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I've been lucky. Uh, Judy's backed me, and uh, um, you know, and, and and it's been different as an inventor. You know, you uh, you had the uh, the fa the famine and feast thing and the first years of an inventor is ter terribly hard because you've got no money you've got absolutely no money until you start licensing products and a product takes about two years to get to market before you get royalties and so we had a very tough couple of years at the start um yeah. and she stood by me and you know um and unfortunately you know it made i, I became very successful but it was only yeah. with that help yeah that, 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 that uh, you know <laughs> Do, 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 do you have, have any children? No, unfortunately, no, unfortunately, we couldn't have children, but we've got some fantastic nieces and nephews and, uh, and we're, 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 we're some grandparents, we are. Mind you, it costs us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want all the, they want all the more things, so, you know, that we, oh, we're, now we're buying them iPhones and things and they cost a lot of money. <laughs> Okay. Tony, but they're very special. Yeah, Tony, thank you so much for, for coming on this show. It's been a lovely chat. Yeah, yeah, you have really shown out a lot of great things that you have done. And I will can you I I will I, I will put your your details up so that if anybody wants to get in touch with you because I have I have a lot of people with children with Thank you. cerebral palsy and things on my network. So that if they want to get in touch with you for the for the sensors and, 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 and some of your devices, then they get in touch with you. And I'm sure you you, you fantastic. You part of your passion for, for, for genuinely helping people in these conditions, you you, you make yourself available to them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the thing is, is that I, the problem is at the moment, I'm a, I'm a one man band, if you like. Yeah. And I'm, everything I'm doing is from my pension. I, I'm self, I'm self funding all this with my pensions. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I am not a company. I can't, I can't make things because I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm using up my pension basically <laughs> to pay this stuff. Um, but I'm hoping you know with the wonderful things like the launch yesterday there may be an opportunity and then if i can get some backing yeah this you know all this can be out there for everyone and so yeah. on yeah, yeah. We, 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 we hope for the best thank you once again and have a lovely day and you and it's been wonderful wonderful chatting to you bye-bye bye-bye bye-bye